What's up? I'm Colton Lindsay, financially free by the age of 32. And my team has got Mark Moss set up for some shorts. I'm be watching, reacting. Comment down below what you think. I love Mark Moss. I had him speak at our Financial Freedom Mastermind event last year in Jacksonville. Absolutely love him. The dude is a wizard around a couple things. One, Bitcoin, super smart. In fact, he's one of the reasons I keep buying more Bitcoin. He's one of the reasons I moved it to cold storage. After he spoke that event, he started talking about some things. It just made me realize keeping it on exchange today is just not safe for that type of asymmetrical black swan investment. But the other thing that he understands really well is how the economy works and how fractional banking works. He sees economic and political and geographical patterns like a freaking wizard and he has the ability to break them down. So I'm excited to see what he has to say. To equate Bitcoin and crypto shows you don't understand yep. either. There's a technological revolution that's happening here, but most people are blinded to it because of the crypto um, boom and bust that's been happening. Mm -hmm. But there's actually a revolution that's happening. So for the first time ever, we've created digital scarcity. Well, now, what does that mean? We don't really know. When steel was invented, it gave us a new material that we could build skyscrapers and bridges with. It also gave us material we could build a space shuttle with. But we didn't know that when steel came out, right? And so we have a new set of building blocks. We don't know exactly what we built off of that. But I think it's the best risk-adjusted investment that we could make right now. So one of the things that I learned from Mark when he spoke at my event was that uh, crypto is a security where Bitcoin is a commodity. And a commodity has an intrinsic value because of what he's talking about with scarcity. And what's cool about this technology, there'll be about 21 million Bitcoins mined. That's probably gonna be, and don't quote me on this, the year 2140, roughly around there by the time it finishes, is what he's saying is opportunity is off the radar of how we will use this technology. We may not even know right now. We probably don't know how we're gonna do it. And so imagine if you owned steel and then it was flipped into a space shuttle, how the value of that would have went up in that time. I'm just throwing some shit out there, right? You do not wanna miss the opportunity of owning Bitcoin. However, Mark could be full of shit. I actually trust the guy. I've met him, I've spoke with him, I've FaceTimed with him, he's a smart dude. But what if he's wrong? And ultimately you have to do the due diligence for yourself. So me personally, you have to understand what your portfolio management is all about. And I am definitely not going all in on Bitcoin because I'm smart enough to know I've been wrong a lot in my life and I don't want to be wrong in a way that kills me. However, I do have enough invested in there that I think I'm going to be right and I think it's going to make me a lot of money. I think I'm going to be able to increase my buying power significantly through this investment and I didn't fully understand, I still don't, Bitcoin before Mark spoke because I was looking at the 2017 Bitcoin standard and so much stuff has changed since then on how Bitcoin can be transacted, how it can be used, and what the technology is gonna be used for. It's completely different than crypto. By the way, I personally don't own cryptos. I own Bitcoin and that's it. Sovereign debt crisis in about 100 years. And so this super inflated you know, debt bubble is collapsing. Of course, the Federal Reserve is restricting the monetary supply by raising rates. They came off of their easing, their monetary easing program to do monetary tightening. That's causing problems all over the world in every area from yeah from politics like where now people can't afford their debt and so we want you know the president wants to forgive student loans and now we need to raise taxes and then we have to offset people's expensive energy bills so yeah politics and of course finance where we have the stock markets crashing the cryptocurrency markets are crashing and then of course we have technology which is trying to kind of offset and change all this and it is a wild world See, what I said is he understands patterns, political, geographical, economical, and everything is on patterns. And what you gotta do is have pattern recognition, number one. Number two, pattern utilization. How does this serve me? Or number three, pattern creation. How do I find out which patterns I'm not using and create new patterns to win? And one of the patterns has been very, very clear, and we saw this when I did some videos recently with Caleb Hammer, where he goes through and he drills these people on their debt it's a debt crisis. It is one of the biggest ones in the last 100 years that we've seen. And now you're getting this BS from the White House where we're, we're forgiving, and I don't know exactly how that'll pan out because I didn't pay close enough attention, but we're forgiving these student loans that were bad loans in the first place. But one of the things that I'm seeing is all these, I think you're gonna have a bunch of defaults in the next six to 12 months on small business loans because everyone got those EIDL loans, you know, those economic disaster loans from COVID. A lot of people got them. 
but people are running out of cash to keep paying the bill on that. And we're only three or four years into that. And these are 30 year notes, man. And so people are now getting these short term simple interest loans that are due in 12 months, no payments on them during the time, but you got like 30, 40% interest on those. Those are gonna start to come due for the people that ran out of cash and they tried to extend just a little bit more, but the piper has come to roost or some saying like that because financing is expensive right now as feds have to curb inflation by keep pushing rates up. It's gonna keep going up, which means financing on, on anything is gonna be significantly more expensive. And that's just the facts. Crypto billionaire, Sam Bankman Fried, pumped $40 million into the Democratic Party before the Scam. midterm, which just happened, just days before the bankruptcy scandal happened. Sam Bankman Fried, SBF, saw his business, cryptocurrency exchange, FTX, file for bankruptcy after it funneled 40 million to the Democratic Party. Parents are professors who specifically work in areas of trying to ban cash and enforcing tax policy. They're also major Democratic bundlers, if we will, raising money, donating to super PACs. His brother also started a business that will hopefully get money from the government as well as donating lots of money back to the Democratic Party. He also has ties to the regulatory body with his girlfriend and Gary Gensler, the head of the SEC. And somehow this exchange was started just after Biden announced he would run and they became Biden's second largest donor. I guess he's not a crypto billionaire anymore. I don't I don't know if he is, but I'm so glad I didn't own FTX. I just saw recently he got jail time for witness tampering. Um, and that's the challenge. In fact, I remember before this happened, uh, it was actually when FTX was collapsing. It was just very beginning. And this is when uh, Mark spoke at my event and he suggested to get on the cold storage because how many exchanges are doing this behind the doors because it really is unregulated. I think what we're seeing here is a political pattern of how corrupt the political system is. I don't care if it's Republican or Democrat. I mean, you look at Robert Kennedy Jr. freaking have loved his campaign so far and he got denied secret service. Are you kidding me? He's got a freaking target on his head. You got, what is the odds that Trump has three or four months of trials leading in the primary election. And you got Biden who can't even put six words together. He, he got more votes than President Obama, which actually is one of the best orators. None of this shit makes sense. And then you, you, you see all of the corruption coming out with Twitter and Facebook and how they were censoring information like the Hunter Biden laptop. I mean, you probably got something here on YouTube right now where they're gonna censor this shit. You're seeing senators and Congress people have their YouTube accounts shut down. Something is very, very interesting going on. But what I love about Mark is Mark doesn't say it's this or it's that. He has some questions with a lot of data that leads you to your own conclusion to make some decisions. And what, why he's saying Bitcoin is really cool, which I know he didn't talk about it right here, is it's because there is disruption in the flow right now with these crises. If I wanted to store my money in cash, I'd have to put it under a mattress or put it in a safe. If I had it in gold, I'd have to go bury it in the dirt somewhere, build up a, a safe. If I had a lot of gold, I'd have to build up a, a vault and I'd have to hire security for it. But Bitcoin doesn't require that. Bitcoin requires just a cryptographic security key. I recommend using something called cold storage. So you could use a hardware wallet like a Trezor, T-R-E-Z-O-R, -E Trezor or a Ledger. Those are hardware wallets, like a little USB drive. I would recommend that. You could also use like an app on your phone or on your computer. I don't recommend recommend those as much, but you can do that for ease of use, but pull it off of the exchange. Why do you have it there to earn 4%? Is that 4% worth the risk of losing it all? I would say certainly not. Certainly not. That's exactly why I took mine off. I was actually had mine on an exchange, which is called Abra. I haven't checked into them recently, but I know that they were SEC approved for a while as a banking system, but then there were reports coming out that they were facing illiquidity problems. In fact, I'm gonna probably go look them up afterwards. I had took all my money off of there long before that happened because what I was doing, I was staking my Bitcoin. I was making two, three, four, four, I don't remember what it was. I think it started at four, went down to like 2% as the market shifted. And then Mark said to me, he was like, why would you risk losing that money on this exchange for two or 3% extra when you could secure it in cold storage because you're, the asymmetrical is the Bitcoin itself. It's not the percentage. I was trying to squeeze more juice out of it, but by squeezing more juice, I crushed my asymmetrical investment because it'd be, I, here's how asymmetrical works works. Reduce risk and increase upside. Reduce exposure and increase upside. But I had increased risk to try and increase my upside. That's not asymmetrical. That's just more risk. So I love what he says about that. I completely agree. I recommend Trezor as well. In fact, I got it from him. So you just listen to him. Anything on Bitcoin, don't listen to me. Listen to him. 
Jerome Powell basically said, we have to make you broke in order to save you. That's not the exact words that he said, but they came out, they raised interest rates some more, another 0.75 percentage points onto the Fed funds rate, which is the price of money. Most people don't think about it, but you buy money. If I wanna get a house, it's $100,000. I don't have $100,000, I need to go buy the money. I have to buy the 100,000 for the house. The cost of buying that $100,000 is the interest rate I pay, and the Fed sets that interest rate, and they've raised it now another 0.75 percentage points, or what we call 75 basis points, and as they continue to bring the price of money up, it continues to bring the stock and asset prices down. Um, look, basically, Jerome Powell is the one guy that nobody likes right now, supposedly the new Fauci, but I got to think if I was Jerome Powell, I'd probably be raising rates too. Because anyone knows that the amount of free money, the amount of printing that has gone on the last 12 years is unsustainable with over $31 trillion in debt. And so what he is saying and describing by Jerome Powell is, that, I think he's the Fed chair, is that, hey, we gotta slow this down. And that's actually gonna mean that things are gonna get more expensive and you can't afford shit. So we're gonna make you go broke. He didn't say it that way, but that's what it absolutely means. So what does that mean for you? You better find a way, and this is what I love about Mark. Follow Mark, reach out to Mark, attend Mark seminars. And he actually, I think he's got some business courses out now as well. But you gotta be able to create assets. One is a business asset that just pumps cash out. And two is you gotta get investment assets that you move your profit from your business into, whether it's Bitcoin, real estate. I like stocks and equities. He probably wouldn't recommend that. Gold and silver I like. He probably wouldn't recommend that. But my point is, the idea is you wanna get 15 different asset classes according to Ray Dalio that reduces your risk by over 80%. But if you're just working the J-O-B or a business operator, like I'm in the real estate industry by trade, I help real estate agents create agent attraction, create residual income, create info products, things like that. What I've seen in the real estate market and even the mortgage market is now these realtors and mortgage offices are getting part-time jobs and their incomes have been dramatically pushed down. And what that does is it creates a lot of fear. And with fear, you feel worse, you make worse decisions, you get worse results. That's what we're seeing right now. You cannot fall into that trap. You have to find ways to be creative, to expand, and to actually make enough value into the marketplace by increasing your value as an asset, and then go make more money than inflation right now, and to be able to afford financing right now, or not afford financing, but just be able to self-fund. I appreciate Mark Moss. He's really amazing at what he does. I think we got one more video here. Let's see what it has to say. This section right here represents the last time the United States government has approached the X date, which is the day that the U.S. Treasury runs out of money and is no longer able to pay their obligations. We've hit this point or we've come close to this before, and this represents the last time we got this close, which was 2011. Now, you might notice that the S&P 500 sold off 17%. Many assets sold off much worse, 20%, 26%, but then some assets did pretty dang good. I like to look back to history to know how to move forward, and that's exactly why I'm going to have this live presentation. I'm inviting you to looking at exactly what's going on, how this problem was created, what the possible resolutions are, what happened in history previous to this, and what I'm doing about it. How I plan to protect my savings and even profit from this, and how you can do the same thing. And the best part, it's all gonna be live and it's all gonna have live question and answer. I'm gonna take your questions, answer them live so we can get through this together. So I have to keep the space limited. If I have too many people, I can't get through all the questions. And so make sure to grab your spot now before they're Look, all gone. Look, now he's just into his webinar. I recommend go find him, follow him on Instagram. Instagram, but what he's talking about, the debt ceiling. And we went past this point and they're constantly raising this debt ceiling. You can go to debtclock.org or something like that. Just Google it. And you can see we're crushing it with debt. We've got a ton of debt. I remember back when Obama was president, we had somewhere around $8 trillion in debt. Back when Bush was in debt, we didn't have that much. Back when President Clinton was president, we actually had a surplus, a positive. So from the 90s to 2023, which is in less than 30 years, we've managed to put $31, $32 trillion in debt, and now we still have a trillion or two deficit. I don't know the exact number. And what I love that Mark's doing is he's helping people understand there's a new economy and the new rules to the game. I, I, this is what I help people do as well. In fact, I'm on a mission right now to help people manage money and understand the new rules of the game. One of those rules of the game that Mark is crushing it in is the info products. What he has found is ways to market through social media, Instagram, creating contact. He's got a badass studio. If you haven't seen it, check it out. And at the studio, he creates content for his ideal client. And I know he likes higher net worth type people that come to his events. And then from there, he teaches them how to grow into scale and look at, I think he's now helping people grow businesses. I help people in the real estate space in what's called agent attraction. 
And there's two ways you monetize that. One is through like a coaching program, a mentorship, a digital course, something like that. It could be affiliate, something like that. Brand deals. The other is through building a downline. I build one with real brokers, got over 1,500 agents right now, and I just got to deposit an A for another $67,000 in residual income. And that's because I'm learning and applying from people like Mark, Tony Robbins, so many of my peers that I look up to that are winning, Chris Krohn, and then I apply what I learned from them and I get into proximity and then I sell proximity to me. You absolutely can do that as well. As things have been crumbling, I've been going to multi seven figures. And what I've learned from people like Mark, as they shift with the rules of the game, they're going to multiple seven figures and beyond as well. And some of them eight figures. And when you look at that, you look at what the traditional way was from going to school, get a job, work at the same career for 30, 40, 50 years. And I know the last decade change careers every five years. Most people aren't making more than a hundred to hundred $150,000 a year mixed with inflation, they just cannot survive, let alone thrive. And you're going to continue to see that going forward unless you learn the new rules of the game. But with external, you're going to see where people's lives actually get harder over the next six, seven, eight years as we come to the end of this decade. And I don't want it to be you. So if you're in real estate, reach out to us. Let us help you and support you because we've got avenues to increase your revenue way faster than the inflation and ways to make money and profit and ways to protect yourself through the changing landscape. Thanks for watching. Smash that like button, comment, and share this with someone else. I love Mark. I love what he's doing in the marketplace and who he's serving. And go check him out. Go follow him. We'll see you soon.